What's up everybody? It's your boy Rishref back at it with another video. I know it's been a really long time since I've uploaded on the channel. I've just been really busy, you know, with life, you know, um, new accomplishments, you know, everything, you know, going in life that, you know, just new chapters and stuff. So I'm really excited to get really back into this video, back into the YouTube thing. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So let's just say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go all in. I'm gonna buy the stock now. So the the stock is randomly changing and it's rapidly changing every second. All right, everybody, you just saw what we're gonna be making today. We're gonna to be making the stock UI. It's gonna be so awesome because you can use this as investments for your games and they're live, real time, constantly changing. You can do it with colors and everything. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is declare leader stats. So go to the server script service new script the script name doesn't matter in this instance and then we're going to do game.players and if you're a regular here on the channel you know this is what we're always doing and then we're going to say player added connect function now within this function add one of the parameters here is player and then press enter it should auto complete so what this does is as soon as a player is added to the game this function will execute for everyone. So once it's executing for everyone, what's gonna happen is as soon as we load in, the leader stats is going to create something called a folder. Once we create this folder, we need to name it. And we're gonna name this folder, you guessed it, leader stats with no capital L or no capital characters at all. And we're gonna do leader stats dot parent equals player. Now, take whatever you want. So I'm gonna be calling mine cash. It's gonna be instance dot new int value. So this is what we're gonna use for our leaderboard, and it's gonna be cash dot name equals. I'm gonna use capital C cash. We're gonna say cash dot parent equals leader stats, and then this right here is whatever you want to start off with. So this is, I'm just going to start off with $500, uh, $500 for cash. And then once I go ahead and start off with that, we're pretty much done with that. That's the leader stats. We're going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and press test. Sweet. Okay. So now we have $500 cash at the top, right? Now we, we have that. Let's go ahead and make our UI. We're going to go screen UI and I'm just going to call it trade UI. Once I do this trade UI, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a frame. This is all for aesthetics. So you guys do need to keep in mind that how the code is written is determined on how you want your UI made up of. And I'll explain that later in the video. So I'm just gonna have mine right here. I know that it's not gonna be all center and stuff, but I'm just gonna leave frame as frame, although you really shouldn't and if you're making a big game. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna do a button and we'll just put this button here and we'll call this button, we'll just call it button because it makes it a lot easier for us to tell what is what. And then for text, we'll just say buy slash sell, sell because it's gonna be the same exact button for buying and selling. Once we have that, we're gonna go into the frame again, right click, insert object. And what we're gonna wanna press is a text box. So this is gonna be used for input. So we're gonna move this text box to the center here, or we'll actually move it right here. So that way we have a good input and then we'll just call this input. Now, when I was first new to coding, I thought all these names signified something. You see button and input here, they could be called A and B or X and Y, it doesn't really matter. Then the last thing you're gonna wanna do is a text label. This is gonna display how much money we have. And then for this, I'll just call it display capital D display sweet and then we only have to do one last thing to get started we just have to insert a script right click onto the trade UI insert local script that should bring you up here you should have print hello world now this is a fairly short script and I'm gonna be very thorough throughout the whole process so that way you can fully understand every line of code in here um, we're going to shoot for around 26 lines of code here. It's not that big of a deal. So the first thing we need to know is, is the player invested? So we're going to say is invested 
equals false. Because starting off rip, we are not going to be invested. And then what is our current investment? It's zero. And then who is our player? Well, our player is player. Skip two lines here. We'll say script.parent. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because you need to know what the name of all your things are. So in my instance, I have frame. And the way you can reference this is we're going to say script.parent. So our parent is the trade UI. And then frame is a child of it. So now once I say parent, I can now say frame. And it should auto-complete. If it's auto-completing for you in this local script, you're doing it correctly. And I advise you just follow my example first and then into implement it in your own game. Then we're going to go ahead and say button dot mouse button click this should all auto complete here until you get to the ending here and then you press enter great so whenever we click the button for interacting with our menu here it's going to fire this function so what we need to know is is sorry we need to go if is invested equal equal false then so basically it's common sense if we're not invested and if two number so why two number and because you're probably like Rishraf this is too confusing so far well I'm about to explain so what we need to do is get this guy's value right it's called the input we need to get the input whatever the whatever the player enters there so let's not use two number right now we'll say script dot parent dot frame dot display I'm sorry we'll go input dot text so this is the input text right here and we say if it's less than player find first child leader stats dot cash dot value then okay so if whatever the player enters here is less than or equal to our value right so if I entered in $500 well then if it's less than or equal to which it is $500 my starting value then we're good to go well then now it's like what if I were to enter letters here or what if what if I were to enter something that's not any sort of int value but also you need to understand that text is a string text is not an int value it cannot be read as an integer unless you have something converting it so roblox has a built-in function called two number so we have to put two number here because we need to convert our text on the screen to a number so we can actually compare it to our value and to our number in our own leader stats does that make sense i hope i i hope i did good a good job at explaining there it has been a while since i've made a video so my explaining skills may not be there but once we click this button and once we have a number and honestly what I would do is here is if two number is greater than zero two I didn't think about that so what you want to do is do if it's greater than zero as well so that way they can't just invest zero dollars but you can add another if statement in here as well but once we do this we're gonna say is invested equals true because once we're submitting it once we submit it to the blockchain or whatever it's called it's invested now we're going to say player, find first child, leader stats again. And this is how you're going to reference it. Because the reason you need, to, you need to know this is because in your other script, you have the player here, and then you need to go into their leader stats, and then something called cash, and then their value. So it all makes sense to the other script here. So once you do this, you're going to say dot cash. Oh, value it won't auto complete because it can't read it until until runtime and then we're gonna find our first child again and this is what we call minusing the money here and we're gonna say minus and then you can literally just copy and paste this right here it's good to just make sure you write it once and then copy and paste it here so what we're doing here is we're finding our value our cash is our cash we're saying yo we have our cash but we're going to minus whatever we invest. So it's going to be taken away from us. And then we're going to set our investment to 
whatever that we wanted to invest. So we're just going to paste that in there again. It's very important that you just know what know what this means. This is very important. This is the input text. And then how is the player going to know what they inputted? Well, that's easy. We'll say script.frame.display.text. It's very important you put display.text equals investment. And you're probably like, well, how come I don't have to like do two text or you know how we have two two jump you know how we have to do two number why don't we have to do two string or two text or whatever well because a text can display an integer but the reason we're using two number here is because we can't display a text I'm sorry we can't play an integer to text if that makes sense so what I mean by this is we can convert a integer to text but we can't convert a text to integer without using two number does that make sense if it doesn't feel free to leave a comment below and I'll I'll go ahead and get to that so come down to this end here drop a line press else and then enter again or twice in this instance so I don't know why it made me do that but then we'll say player find first child leader stats again so player find first child leader stats and I'll explain what's going on here. So if we're invested, if we're not invested, then do all this. So if basically, if we're not invested, take all the money that we have when we click the button. But then it's else. So else is the opposite of whatever this is, because it counters this. And you can see if your else is activated by pressing the drop down here. So if we are invested, so if we click this button and we are invested, well, since we're invested, we must be wanting to withdraw our currency that we have invested into the stock market. So in that case, what we have to do is add our investment back to our value, back to our cash, back to our leader stats. And then we get a set investment, we got to reset it back to zero. And then this is where it gets a little bit of complicated because you kind of have to know the little syntax and little grammar right here and what we need to do is be very careful we can play two number and once you do two two number inside of these parentheses do string dot format and the reason that we have to do this is because when we do calculate the random price we need to be able to display it as a whole number and not all these dot XYZ you know three four eight whatever and it's going to be going to decimals because of how the math is multiplying and calculating a random number so what we need to do here is put the percent sign followed by a period so once you have that you'll see the red line then press I just put a space dot dot parentheses the amount of decimal places you want here then you go dot dot parentheses F lowercase f then do comma investment. So this format right here takes the first argument, which is the string. So the percentage just classifies what you want. So this is the amount of decimal places you want. So if I set it to one, it's gonna round to the first decimal place. If I set it to two, the second decimal place. But in here, I wanna keep it strictly whole number. So just use zero. Lastly, is invested equals false. Because if we're withdrawing, we're not invested anymore. And that's basically it for handling everything inside the code. And then how to make it random, you say? Well, it's really easy. You just do a while statement. So we're gonna say while, wait, do, end. And so this is the frequency. I like to keep it just at one. I think that's the most realistic. I think it gives the user so much time to really you know, decide if they wanna withdraw or if they wanna keep investing. You know, it's, it's a good number, but it's totally up to you. It's your guys' game. And then just three more lines of code in here to say if is invested. You always want to check, you know. So if we are invested, our investment equals investment times. So that's going to be shift eight times. I like to do parentheses so I can really do the PEMDAS of the whole thing. We'll say dot new. So our investment times a new number that's being generated here 
we're going to say next number. Not next integer, next number. So that way we can multiply by decimals. Now, this is very important. This, this number two right here is very important. This right here is the frequency on how much it's going to rise. So if it's between one and zero, I'm sorry, zero and one, it can only be, it can only go down because your investment can only be multiplied by less than one. So for example, if I invest $100 and it gets multiplied by 0 0.5, 50, 50, 50, which is 0 0.50, then it goes down to half. Then my investment is back down to $50 because it cuts whatever I have in half. But if it's between zero to two, it can be maybe 1.3%. But I like to just put it at three um, I would put it at maybe four or five, depending on how lucky I want my players to feel. But this is totally random. It's just chance. So the higher this number, the better chance of it going up. And it's a pseudo random number. So that means it will generate random numbers between these integers. So once you do that, put it at three for now, just for demonstration purposes. Last line of code here, we'll say script.parent.frame. This should auto be completing. This should already be completing. So what I mean by that is these little pop-ups here should already be coming. And that's how you know that you're doing the UI right. We'll say string.format. And we get to do the same thing. So it's like, why even copy and paste? Or why not copy and paste? And that's all you need to do to make your fully functional stock investing system. So let's go ahead and give it a, a try. So we load in here and we have our little stock investing UI. So let's just say, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna buy the stock now. So the, the stock is randomly changing and it's rapidly changing every second. So since I set it to three, my chances of the stock going up are a bit higher. And wow, my investment's already at, well, I just lost a lot, <laughs> but you can color coordinate this. So if you want the pseudo random number above one, so how you would do that is if you do if the random number is greater than one, store it as a variable, then the text can be green on rise. But if it's less than one, then make the text red. And it's fairly simple how you would do that. Just put it in the weight system. And as you can see, it's at 62,000 now, 57,000. I want to sell, but I'm going to wait. It's at 27,000. I sold it. Now I'm at 27,000 cash. And now if I go back, I'm going to invest all 27,000 again. And you see it minuses the money and we're at 118,000. And that's a super, super easy way on how to make a quick stock investing system for your players. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, comment section is down below. I'm going to try and upload a lot more for you guys. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't. Have a good one.